The windows were broken. Pieces of wood had been placed to stop the cold. The door hung without very much hardware. I opened it, came in. I saw a bare room, not too large. On one side was a bed, a mattress, on the floor rather. On the other side of the room was a table with a chair and several drawers, one on top of the other. And a few pots and pans, pot-bellied stove, a few instruments for eating and drinking, cups, saucers, spoon and fork and knife and so on. Very, very little, if anything, was the entire worldly possessions of Itcha the drunk. And Itcha was snoring. And here I was, taking my time for my precious learning, and Itcha sleeping. I was upset. But then I thought the better of it, the light was on, and there was a chair and a table, and I could sit and study in that room. And so I began to study. And an hour went by, and Itcha still sleeping. Two hours went by, he's still sleeping. Three hours went by. Boy, was I angry at this point. Three hours I could have studied in the yeshiva, and instead I was wasting my time here in this horrible shack. I got up in my anger to leave, and at that moment Itcha looked up and said, Chaim Chaikel, don't leave, stay. So I said, what is it, Itcha? What do you want? He said, I told you. I will die tonight at exactly 1 a.m. And I don't want to die alone. I want you to be here to take care of what has to be taken care of. Itcha. Nobody knows when they're going to die. Chaim Chaikel, I'm telling you, I will die exactly at 1 a.m. And I want to tell you what should happen to me. Okay, Itcha, have it your way. First thing I want you to know is I want to be buried by the Hever Kadisha in the old cemetery. And I want to be buried next to the grave. And he mentioned the grave of a great tzaddik who had died several hundred years before. At this point, I couldn't contain myself. I began to laugh. Itcha. You want to be buried next to that tzaddik? How dare you? First of all, there's no room. And secondly, how can you have the gall, the chutzpah, to want to be buried next to such a holy man when you don't even put on tefillah? I had never seen him daven. And Itch got very angry at me. What? You suspect a Jew not to put on tefillah? Look in those drawers that are stacked up in the top drawer. I began to feel a fear. Itcha is not what he appeared to be. I went to the drawer and I saw a tefillin pouch. And I opened it up and had I not seen it, I wouldn't have believed that it. it was the most beautiful pair of tefillin phylacteries that Jewish people wear after their bar mitzvah, was the most beautiful pair I'd ever seen. In order to make sure that the Hevra Kadisha will follow my wish, underneath that drawer there's another drawer which has my writings. Those writings you will give to the Rav, and he will testify that my request should be followed. I was already shaking. I took the first drawer off and I looked at the content of the second drawer and I noticed that everything that was be what was written there was in a strange language dealing with topics that I had never seen. But I knew enough that these concepts were found in the secret teaching of the Torah called the Kabbalah. 
And then it dawned on me, Itcha this drunk was only an act. He was really a holy saint who spent all of his days in concentration and prayer and study devoted to God alone, known as a tzaddik nistra, holy hidden saint, which only God knew of him. So I said, Itche, you're a hidden tzaddik, and you said that we wouldn't be able to walk if we wouldn't help that man. You cursed us. Yes, said Itche, as that's why I didn't respond to you. I regretted it as soon as I said those words. Soon it was at one o'clock, and Itche said, wait, I'm going to say the Shema and the prayers, and then I'll die. And then you'll go to the Hevra Kadisha, the burial society. It just stood up, said the Shema on his bed, and in a moment after saying his last prayers, turned on his side, and he died. At that moment, I had this incredible energy to fulfill his wishes, and I went immediately to the members of the Hevra Kadisha, and I roused them from sleep, and I said, you have to make an emergency meeting. Itcha, the shikha just died, and he needs to be buried. And he's not a drunk. He's really a hidden tzaddik. Members of the burial society gathered together, and I told them his request, and I had the rav, the rabbi of the town, look at his writings. And the rav was overwhelmed. He says, this wasn't Itche. He was Rabbi Itche. Tell everyone in town that I will be at the funeral. Like wildfire, it spread throughout the town that Itche was really a hidden Sadik, the one that we had all made fun of, was really a hidden saint, and we all now had terrible regrets over how we would make fun of him, how we would smirk at him, how we mistreated him. It was too late now, but we had to fulfill his wishes. We took him, he was very, very skinny. We brought him to the old cemetery. We thought that it would be impossible to find a place near the great saint at Sadiq that lived, that died, that was buried there in the cemetery. But he was a small man, and there was just enough space for a small grave to be placed next to that great saint. After the burial, we all reflected on what had transpired throughout his life, throughout our time that we knew him. And then we realized that Itcha had said words that were prophetic. He said we would never walk again if we didn't help this man. And all of us, all 30 or so boys who were there that night, all of them died without being able to walk on their feet. I checked, and even those who were taken to be killed in Auschwitz and other places, all had either their feet amputated or could not walk before they died. I am the last one. And today, the doctor told me that he's going to have to amputate my feet, all because I did not go to help that Jew. And I violated the words of this hidden saint, 